Okay, we're still talking about HBR's top tens. I always do that for a while, okay. On mental toughness. So how do you build your mental toughness? Uh, that's all the, that's what we're reviewing, their top 10 must-reads from HBR. And I'm giving you the neuroscience spin on it. I'm Dr. Mary Wetzel. So we're talking a little bit about cognitive fitness is what the term of this article is. So it's from 2007. It's from Roderick Gilkey and Clint Kitts. And so um, the story goes in 1990, it was the decade of the brain. You know, it, was de it was declared the decade of the brain. Um, and, and there was a great quote that said, smart people have trouble learning because it involves so much floundering and failure. And play is hard work. So, you know, one of the facts is that when we play, we're testing things, we're trying things out, or we don't know the right or wrong, or, but it's a joyful experience, right? So it's a positive experience. Um, so play is a really positive state of the brain. Um, but this quote is interesting, it's from Chris Argyris, A-R-G-Y-R-I-S, Argyris. Anyway, um, so this, I guess, is from the decade of the brain. As smart people have trouble learning because it involves so much floundering and failure. It's funny. So, you know, that's a lot of that really leads to our bias that we think that floundering and failure is bad. And, you know, when we know what we know about neuroscience is that our brain is made to learn and grow and um, try, we can try things and we're not gonna be perfect. And yes, there will be floundering and yes, it will feel weird. Um, just like recently, my husband and I went snorkeling since we're not in our islands. That was new to us, it felt weird and uncomfortable, but it was really cool. So we're learning and so it's something new. Um, and so that's all right. So we can learn new things, but it doesn't, we don't feel solid about it, but and maybe we would fail. I mean, maybe we got water in our snorkel and <laughs> it's fine. Um, but that's what they say, that's what the quote ends with play is hard work because you have to keep going and you have to have a sense like a you know, positive attitude about it. So the fact is there is something called neurogenesis. And so that is the fact, the ability of the brain to keep replacing and repairing um, as we learn. So if you think of a baby learning how to crawl first just on their stomachs and then move their little legs and then sometimes they roll over or they go backwards and forward. Um, but it's affected our neurogenesis, our ability for our brain to repair and to build is affected by the way we live our life every day, right? So a lot of it depends on our genes, etc. the way our brain is formed, but it also depends on how we live our life. What do you put into your days, um, your experience, our interactions, our health of our brain, our adult choices matter, right? So we know there's a, a group that looked at the risk of um, vascular dementia in adults, and it, there was a list of 13 things that were um, negative for the brain, like hearing loss, excessive alcohol, um, and medical conditions like high blood pressure, cholesterol, um, diabetes. So ask your primary doc about those risks, but things that we, we think a lot of them that affect the heart um, also affect the brain health. So that's what they're referring to in this article is that the health of the brain uh, reflects our adult choices because some of those diseases are related to our actions. Um, learning new skills is really important for the brain to keep up that neurogenesis. It's called genesis. You hear the word, you know, it's growth. And then neuro is nerves. And so the brain is filled with billions of nerves. So we have the ability to keep, um, you know, keep it fresh. So it's, so what they, they gave an example of like how you could feel less pain with something called neurofeedback. So if you learned a little bit how to manipulate and learn more about the brain, people actually had less pain, which is pretty cool. Um, and then cognitive fitness, how did, how did they um, suggest that we increase that? So they said, increase engaging, engagement with others. Um, if we had more cognitive fitness, we'd be more creative. And it reflects our attitude, our lifestyle choices, our educational level, of course, our skill building, like we're doing now, learning new things, hopefully. Our physicality, so how physical are we day to day, how we sleep, how we exercise, what we eat our risk and our security balance. So if we live in an environment that's very scary um, or uncertain, that, that can increase our stress level day to day, and that is a negative state, like chronic stress is a negative state. So they suggested that we understand um, that our experience can be linked to this neurogenesis or repair and renewal of the brain. Um, they, they suggested working hard at play uh, because play, like, for example, our snorkeling, you know, our snorkeling, um, we had to work hard at, we had to get them, we had to try it. I wasn't really working hard, but it was fun, but it was getting over a hurdle that we hadn't done this before and we were going to try something new. Um, and then it said to search for patterns, you know, search 
watch the narratives that we tell ourselves. Like we said, we are not snorkelers, we shouldn't go snorkeling. Um, but watch for patterns that say that where you keep cutting things out of your life or you're adding more of the toxic things into your life. So you watch for patterns and then seek novelty. Make sure that you're learning something, that you're also always skill building and being innovative. So again, they said they suggested to understand that experience is related to brain growth. So if you're wondering, hey, should I take that course? Should I buy, you know, Brain Fresh's leadership lift? Yes, because the more you learn, the more you're gonna encourage brain growth. Uh, it suggested working hard at play. I love that line, work hard at play. And then search for patterns, what's working, what's not working, kind of evaluate things. If you're not sure how to do that, you know, try this. Uh, another article suggested journaling 15 minutes each day. Um, that kind of clarifies exactly what really is truly happening because it gives you time to kind of sit and think about things. And then seek novelty and innovation. And why do we want to do that? We want to do that because um, that's building our, it's keeping our brain fresh, right? So it suggests this neurogenesis is related to the, by the way we live, by experiences, our interactions, by the health of the brain. So you talk to your primary care doctor about that, by our adult choices, by how often we learn new skills. Um, so that's pretty amazing. So we can increase our cognitive fitness. We can feel more engaged, more creative um, by doing these things, you know, by watching our threat level where we are. If you, if you are currently in a stressful environment and you can get out and there's another option uh, that may be, um, you know, something to do because chronic stress is not a negative state. Um, our attitude matters. So do you feel like, yeah, I got this. I'm going to try some new things. Um, what is, how's your lifestyle choices going? How are they going? You know, do you exercise? Do you rest? Um, do you have healthy nutrition? Do you build skills? Do you stay physical? Do you put a priority on sleeping? Do you learn things? How's your educational level? Um, so again, so they recommend uh, these four things. Understanding our experiences every day, how, what we decide to do will indeed influence our neurogenesis. Pretty cool, huh? We're pretty powerful. And then work hard at play, search for patterns, and seek novelty and innovation. Because again, you're going to encourage that neurogenesis. Super cool stuff, okay? You got this. So let me know which one you're going to choose. Are you going to work hard at play? Are you going to search for patterns? Are you going to seek novelty and innovation? Are you going to watch your lifestyle factors? Let me know. All right, you got this.